Comedian Ryan Hamilton will be performing at the Colonial Theater in Idaho Falls, November 25th and 26th. We are pleased to be talking with him today over Zoom. Ryan, thanks for joining us. Sure. First of all, I wanted to ask you, earlier this year, it was January, I believe, you uh, kind of put a hold on your tour because you got hit by a bus. And I was yeah. curious how you're doing. Well, I'm... Uh... I'm I'm doing pretty well considering I'm I'm able to do everything that I used to do. I'm still working on physical therapy stuff. Um but I'm able to travel to the shows. Uh made a lot of progress. Yeah, I'm doing okay. It was quite serious, but um it's been I've learned a lot. <laughs> I'll talk about it a lot in the show actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, that was actually yeah, I was when I heard the news, I was I laughed, and I don't mean that in a rude way, but I was thinking Ryan Hamilton's good, got got a good a good <laughs> comedy bit coming from this. <laughs> it is an inherently funny accident to get into. I've had to admit. I mean, getting hit by people go oof. I'm so sorry. Getting hit by a bus, people go oof. <clears throat> like, how did that happen? Like, that's a you know, <laughs> how did you not see it? It's a bus. They're so big. <laughs> right. Right. And, uh, you know, it's strange, but that's that's the way it is. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Um, I, it, I've never had something that I had to talk about, and I had to talk about this. So it's it will occupy a lot of the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is this your first time? Is this your first show since um, your recovery? Oh, no. I've been on the road since uh, April. I started back in April. So it happened January 1st. I had a few months off. And, um, yeah, so I've been working since then. Yeah. So what was the extent of the damage? Broken bones? Uh, oh. 10 broken ribs, broken uh, humerus bone in my arm, which required surgery and a titanium plate, and uh, punctured lung. Okay. Holy yeah. cow. The punctured lung yeah. actually sounds pretty serious. Was that... Yeah, I mean, it's not nothing. Um, lungs, I learned, are pretty good at healing. They're an organ that heals itself very well. So the main concern with the lung is if the, the ribs that had been broken were inhibiting the expansion of my lung, but they weren't, fortunately. So um, that just kind of was, there wasn't a lot to be done about the ribs or the lung. It was just, I had to do a lot of physical therapy and exercise to expand my lung out. But the uh, my arm um, was the th was the surgery, and that uh, had to happen right away. So, yeah, those were the 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 three main injuries that I that I sustained. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, ten yeah. broken ribs. Holy cow! People yeah. who break a rib, you know, I've never broken a rib, but I I know people who have, and they've told me there's nothing you can do. You just have to let it heal. So to have yeah. 10 of them broken all at once, that that had to be, I mean, are you fully recovered from that yet? I still have pain and, and I still am working on uh, my mobility and stuff, but um, it's a lot better and it continues to get better. So um, yeah, but at the time that yeah, was pretty painful, 10 broken ribs, five uh, in two places. And um, yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> I couldn't lay down for weeks and weeks, uh, but you know, it's I, I, there's much worse things that, to go through. I didn't have any head trauma, um, nothing like that. So, for the kind of accident that I had, everyone said that um, these will take these these injuries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. you 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 were injured in January. You're back on the road in April. That seems pretty fast. I mean, yeah, pretty... everybody said it was really fast. I worked really hard in that time. Um, I had about five weeks in LA, maybe five or six weeks in LA where I was in hotels. I couldn't travel. And then I went home to uh, Idaho. I was between Idaho and Salt Lake City. A lot of my care was still in Salt Lake City. So I was going back and forth between Idaho and Salt Lake City doing appointments and physical therapy, but with my family. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. I'm glad, glad to hear you're doing well. Thank you. My family has watched your your show on Netflix many times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were bummed when we heard that you were injured. Oh, well, 
you know, we're, we're in Eastern Idaho, so you're like one of our own, you know? I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. I appreciate that. It's, I, I got a lot of, I got a lot of outpouring from the people around there. It was very nice to hear. I didn't expect this to become a news item, but it did become a little minor news item uh, at home and around uh, around there. And so I did hear from a lot of people and that was very nice, very nice. Wow. So I want to talk about the show a little bit. Um, it's November 25th and 26th. You're going to be in Idaho Falls at the Colonial Theater. Yeah. Um, this is your second year, I believe, performing in Idaho Falls. Is yeah, right? second time we've done it. Uh, we did it over Thanksgiving last year as well. So uh, second time. Um, and you said you were able to come home during your injury and mm -hmm. recover a little bit. So you have you have been back to Idaho recently. Um, yeah. But is it as a performer? Is it how is it to come back to your your hometown essentially and and perform for for you know your local crowd is that a little bit strange or do you like it um it's both i mean i really like it but it's also unique because i know so many people often in the audience but i also get to talk about things that are very specific to home and to our little corner of the state and that's fun for me because I get to make references that only we would understand, you know? So that's really fun. Um, we did a lot of that last year and hopefully I'll do that again, but it's kind of like stuff that I don't really get to work on anywhere else. So it's just, uh, but yeah, it's really fun. And I get to see a lot of people feels a bit like a reunion sometimes. And, um, yeah, it's really fun. Is this show going to be, um, a mix of, some of your old material with some new stuff or is it all new stuff or what's it going to be like? It'll be completely new from the special. Um, and I would say nearly all new from last year, but there may be a couple of jokes from last year, perhaps. Um, we'll see, but you know, um, but it'll be mostly new, uh, completely new from the special for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was interested be because I know you grew up in Eastern Idaho, so I was interested in learning a little bit about your upbringing and how you got started yeah. in comedy and all of that. Did you grow up in, was it Ashton? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. right. Ashton, Idaho. And so, at what point, I mean, you talk a lot about growing up in Ashton without mentioning the name specifically in your Netflix special. You kind of yeah. mentioned some of the fun little, you know, quirky cultureness of small town idaho a thousand people you talk about yeah. you know going to the parade on the fourth of july and seeing a moose in the backyard which is so different from people who live in new york you know right. stuff like that um so do you want to talk about growing up in that kind of background and then moving to to new york how long have you lived in new york now since uh i guess since 2008 quite a long time i've lived here I mean, I, um, yeah, yeah, it's obviously very different, but I get home a lot. I spent a lot of time at home um, during uh, when everything was shut down for the pandemic with COVID. I was home in Idaho nearly all of that time. Um, I've always kind of felt um, like I've got my feet in two different worlds for a long time you know i get home a lot i'm i'm, I'm quite different here in new york um i love getting home um but yeah it's it's always different i'm always kind of trying to explain to my new york friends what my life in idaho is like and what my life in new york is like to my family in idaho so it's always this i'm kind of like in two worlds constantly i feel like but you know, it's great. I moved here for comedy, but there's so much about it that I love. Um, but it's hard for me too. I miss nature a lot. So I feel cramped here a lot. And I love to, you know, I live across from the park and I go into the park. I was just out there this morning, but it's just not the same as looking out my window and seeing the Tetons. And there's something that I just, my, my mind and body just craves to be around that. And so I do miss that a lot, yeah. but, um, you know, so I, I, I enjoy getting back home. I still get back home as much as I can. 
What, what kind of, like, what were you like as a kid growing up in Eastern Idaho? What was your, was it typical of most people in Eastern Idaho? Or were you a little different or, you know, talk about that a little bit. I mean, uh, it's hard for me to say specifically, but I would say I was a little different. And I think most of my friends and everybody in that I grew up with would say that probably too. We, my mother's side of the family um, was from Ashton years, years back been there a long time but we were one of the only families that weren't farming families um my grandfather had a general variety store that was kind of the family business there for a long time for years and years and so we weren't uh farmers so i i was around farmers i sometimes feel like i was a farm kid you know i, I worked in the potatoes for potato harvest all my friends run farms but i was a little different my dad was from southern california and I always kind of connected to that culture for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> and so, you know, I was always a little different. I, I was trying to do things. I was attracted to comedy right away for some reason. I don't know what it was, but even very young, I was interested in stand-up comedy. And my parents would wake me up if there was a stand-up comedian on The Tonight Show and I would come watch. And when I was about 14, I really wanted to be a humor columnist. We would read the Sunday paper and um, there was a humor column that was syndicated. Dave Barry was, and he, I just loved it. And I thought this guy's the greatest job in the world. We didn't even have a school newspaper at the time. So I called uh, the county paper and I said, can I have a column? And at that time they would, they just said, yeah. So I started writing a column in the newspaper. I tried to make it funny. And then, um, the local NBC affiliate there in Idaho Falls asked me if I was interested in journalism. They found me, said, do you want to learn how to shoot sports? So I started shooting sports for, uh, at that time it was Channel 8. And uh, it, I would, every Friday night, I would run around to different high schools they would assign me to and I would shoot sports. And I would run back to the station. I learned how to edit and we would write and try to get jokes on the air. And so... Um, that was just a huge thrill to me. I kind of got this weird, uh, you know, so Southeastern Idaho <laughs> uh, journey into my little weird way to get into comedy, kind of. And then I went to uh, college at Rick's College there in Rexburg at the time and um, had a little radio show. And... Uh, we decided to do stand-up comedy. So that was the first time I ever did stand-up comedy was for the radio station at uh, what was then Crago's Pizza in Rexburg. <laughs> and um, so, I don't know, I was always drawn to those things. I was always doing different stuff. I felt like um, I fit in fine. I had a lot of friends, but yeah, I, I think I was uh, a little different. I wasn't like, I wasn't too athletic. I was interested in, my interests were a little strange, I guess, or for uh, where I grew up, but um, I don't know. Yeah, I would say I was a little different, I think. Was there like one person who ever kind of took you in and said, hey, Ryan, I think you have what it takes to, to make it big and to make a career out of this? You know, was there one experience where you pinpoint, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to New York and and try and make this thing a career no not really one experience i mean it was a long time of me trying things I, I i never really thought of it as a career for a long time i was just really interested in it i i i started a career in public relations and i thought that would be my career and i got laid off and i was looking for another job and i was kind of disillusioned i didn't know what to do and i started looking for another job pretty seriously and not being like it was kind of a confusing time and um, I started doing comedy more and more and more. And I decided I'm going to try to do comedy for a year and see what happens and just put all my effort into it. And and then a few things happened, you know, a few things happened. I did this comedy competition. I I moved to Seattle at that time for because I needed to get on stage every night. I started comedy in Utah um, and uh and then I moved to Seattle just for a year at that time to kind of, I, I wasn't ready for New York or LA. I felt like I just wanted to see what it was like to get on stage every night. And um, I was in a competition 
and I won the industry night. It was a weeks long competition, but there was one night when people from LA came who were like from studios and they were uh, rep looking to represent uh, comedians. And I won that night when they were the judges. And that night kind of solidified to me like, okay, let's keep going. I got a lot of encouragement from them and uh, from several different people there. And and they told me, you know, and I, they said they invited me to L.A. I went and started auditioning for a few things. Nothing happened. But that was in my really my first year of going all in. And I decided, OK, let, because of that, let's try another year and see what happens. But it takes a long time. But, yeah, it's hard to pinpoint just one specific thing, you know, one specific moment or person that really said you can do this. Um, There's lots of encouraging people along the way, especially at home. My parents were very supportive always you know um bill baxter was the uh <laughs> he was the music drama teacher in high school i did the musicals that was the closest thing there was to performing i didn't sing but i was in them um i used to do like uh i did a lot of things alone but like i remember i ran for student body secretary in high school and i got to do a sketch and it uh, that was a big thrill for me to just to, to write a sketch. I changed the words to how much is that doggy in the window and played, you know, a funny song. So I was looking for ways to perform wherever I could at home. There weren't a lot, but I was just kind of drawn to those little things wherever they were. When you come home to Ashton or Eastern Idaho now, are you, you go out to your small town. I mean, do people just flock to you? Are you like a hometown celebrity now? <laughs> no people it's about it feels about the same because everybody knows everybody anyway so they've all known me for my whole life they want to hear about what's going on um but no it doesn't feel like uh um it really doesn't feel like a celebrity to me it just feels like it feels like coming home the town's been always very supportive you know uh and I don't know, because everybody knows everybody. It just feels like uh, they already know me. They don't need to they don't need to <laughs> re-meet me a lot of the it's, it's, that's how it feels to me. What are you looking forward to about most about performing in, in Idaho? Anything um, in particular? Any any place you want to visit or restaurant you like or you know, anything like that? I mean, I mostly just spend time with my family, you know, that's all I do any anymore when I'm home. Um, I like, I like to go fly fishing and I have my spots and, uh, but it, I don't, it'll probably be too late in the year. In the winter, I, I like to go to Grand Targhee and go snowboarding if I can get that in. Um, what else? I don't know. I like going for drives out in the countryside, just exploring. I did a lot of that during the pandemic. Um, I spend a lot of time in Idaho Falls now when I'm home. My my family, my siblings are there and uh, my mom is there part time. So I'll I'll be in Idaho Falls more, which I never grew up there. So, I, you know, it's it's interesting for me to go home now because I'll spend a lot of time in Idaho Falls. We'll still go back to Ashton and we have our home there and I like spending time there, too. So I kind of I'm going back and forth um, when I'm there. Um, yeah. But mostly just outside stuff. That's the most thing. Mostly what I look forward to is the and, and the shows are always kind of fun because I get to see people that I might not have seen in a long time. And that's nice. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm excited to see you. Um, I've never had the chance to see you live. And okay. so it'll be fun to, to see yeah. you here at the Colonial Theater. Um, Absolutely. As far as the show, um, you said you, it's going to be some new material. Um, what anything you want to say as far as what people can expect i know you don't want to give anything away obviously but no I mean, you know i i do have what's occupied my life this year has been my accident it's been a lot of things that have been tough like a lot of people have had a tough couple of years and i'm talking a lot about that and it feels good it feels cathartic so um i'm talking about that i'm talking about just health in general kind of <laughs> and just trying to you know but that's kind of what i'm going through in my life so um yeah it'll just be you know when you've seen me before 
I'm not uh, breaking any new ground. It's just me doing, talking about my life in new ways that you haven't heard before. So, um, but I'm really enjoying this material and I'm hearing from a lot of people that it's, it's really good. And it's a little more personal, I will say, than anything I've done in the past, um, just because it felt like it needed to be. And I kind of grew and learned a lot this last year. So I guess that might be a little different, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So for people who are watching this, it's going to be November 25th and 26th at the Colonial Theater. Um, yeah. It starts at 7.30 both nights. Right. Um, and then if you don't mind, I wanted to ask you just kind of a few random questions here about sure. you. Um, you do, in your Netflix special, kind of make fun of yourself for being single. Um, yeah. Are you in a relationship currently? Are you dating anyone? <laughs> No, no, <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Still enjoying the single life? Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Got it. Um, what is your favorite movie? My favorite movie of all time? Yeah. I don't know. That's a hard question. Uh, I always liked Ferris Bueller's Day Off, maybe. That's one of my favorites. Nice. I go back to that one. That was a big movie for me growing up, I think. I would say that one, I guess, if I had to choose one. I don't know. Okay. It's a hard question. Yeah. Fav do you have a favorite singer or favorite type of music? I listen to all types of music, really. I mean, I don't uh, I don't narrow it down too much. I, I kind of, I listen to whatever's popular at the time. I've been getting into listening to classical music a little bit. I'll do that. Um, I like going to shows here in New York and seeing a musical. Um, somebody favorite? I mean... I grew up listening to a lot of like uh, stuff that my parents loved, you know, Jackson Brown, Van Morrison, um, uh, stuff in that kind of genre. I'll go back to probably more than anything else. Yeah. Just reminds me of home. Right. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite food? I mean, it's hard to say, uh, no to pizza. I love pizza, especially living here in New York. If I'm going to treat myself, that's a pretty nice treat, I would say. Yeah. Yes. If you weren't in comedy, um, yeah. is there another career you'd like to do? You talked about how you started kind of a PR career. Would that be yeah. a career you'd want to be doing if you weren't a comedian? Uh, I don't know if I would go back into that or not. I, <clears throat> I don't know. I always thought um, I really like real estate interestingly enough <laughs> maybe something in that or some sort of design i like um i like thinking about those things um maybe if i could ever figure out how to do something like that that would be interesting to me um i've always wanted to do more writing maybe if um you know it's kind of related but do some writing maybe something like that do you have any plans to write a book at all or anything Oh, I don't know. I think about it all the time. I write essays here and there that I don't let anybody see. And, um, but maybe, maybe someday, who knows? Yeah. I mean, I have no experience in that. I can't say that I'm, a, I, I don't call myself a writer, but I would like to do more of that. It, in the, in the stand-up comedy world, is there one comedian that you're really good friends with or anything? Yeah, there are a lot. I mean, I have a lot of friends here. I, most of my social circle is comedians these days. And, um, you know, I get to open for Jerry Seinfeld. And that's been really fun. And wow. we've become friends, actually. Uh, and um, that's great. We we get breakfast once in a while and talk a lot about comedy. And we get to do some shows together here and there. And we'll go do sets in New York. And he's become a friend and a mentor. And that's been really fun. Um, another one of my good friends is a very famous comedian in France and Europe. His name is Gad El Malay. Um, he has a special on Netflix in English and a series that he did in English, but he has a very big career as a movie star and comedian in Europe. And he's become a good friend of mine um, as well. He lived here in New York for a while. He's back in Paris now, but I saw him last week for the first time in a while. He's a good friend of mine. And I have a lot of friends here in New York who I'm working with every night, too. Just people that, you know, we're sit down and have dinner at the club and do our sets. And 
so um uh yeah i have a lot i'm i'm very lucky to have a lot of good friends in this in this business i got to um write for amy schumer at the oscars this last year and that was really really great experience and she's been a friend of mine for a long time her life's so busy we don't get to hang out as much but she's always been really good to me and that was a nice experience we got to hang out together and 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 work on that so things like that it's kind of like uh you know we get to work together and i see my friends um when we can but um yeah i guess those are a few but there's there are a lot there are a yeah. lot yeah yeah um so your Netflix special, um, it's a few years old now. Do you yeah. do you have another comedy special in the works anytime soon? I don't know. We're working on it. I who knows? I I would like to sell something sometime soon. We'll see. It has been a while. I feel like I'm ready to put something out. So um, we'll keep you posted. But hopefully soon. Sounds good, Ryan. Yeah. I appreciate your time so much. I know that you're probably busy. Um, so it's, it's a thrill to get to talk no to you here. Thank you. And I, I'm sorry. I didn't realize we were recording video. I thought, so I, I'm, I feel a little, uh, um, like my home is not ready and I don't feel like I, I presentable, but, uh, uh, Oh, you look, you look great, <laughs> <laughs> but well, thank you. But yeah, no, I, I appreciate your time. Thanks for taking time with me and look forward to great. seeing you at the show. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you soon.